So everybody, iPadOS and iOS 18 Public Beta 2, as well as Developer Beta 4, has officially been released. And in this video, I want to go over some of those changes, both from a feature set standpoint, tangibility, visual differences, because again, we are now to the point where Apple is now just iterating on all the different things that are happening. They're fixing some bugs, they're squashing a bunch of issues. So using iPadOS 18 and seeing the differences between a beta 3 versus a beta 4 is gonna be relatively small. Most of the major big functional differences have come out already, but we did notice some nice visual changes that I wanted to go over. So without further ado, let's talk about iPadOS 18 beta 4 as well as public beta 2. Let's get into it. So let's hop right into this video, everybody. And the first thing I wanna show off is going to the build size itself. So if we go right here, I took a screenshot of it. For iPadOS 18 beta 4, we're dealing with about 1.5 gigs in order for it to actually get installed. So make sure that you have about three gigs of internal storage to leave enough room for anything that the iPadOS 18 install would need. Now the public beta 2 is going to be very similar in size. So also leave yourself three gigs for that one, but that's what we're dealing with when it comes to the build size for this time around. The next thing I want to bring up is going to be that build number. So if we go into our settings, go into the about, and then go into iPadOS version, we are now on 22A5316 lowercase j. So we are getting closer to that eventual RC edition, which we should see probably towards the end of September of this year for everybody to finally get their hands on it and to get the public release. The public beta will be a similar build number for those people that are wondering. And now before we get into the what's new features, let's change it up a little bit and actually talk about battery life because Again, I've been very impressed with my battery life on this iPad. I will say that it could be a little bit of recency bias because I am dealing with a brand new M4 iPad Pro. Previously, when I had my M1 iPad Pro, the battery life was pretty atrocious, but let's go into battery life and see exactly what we've been dealing with. So give it a second to load up. Let's go over our last 10 days. And if you can go on a day like this one where we did take up about 90 or 85 to 90% of the battery, we got about six hours and five minutes of screen on time. Now this is with very intensive tasks like LumaFusion and using an external SSD. I was also using Affinity Photo down here and we were using YouTube TV. So six hours of screen on time on a day where I'm using kind of heavier task applications is a definitely a good day and something that my M1 iPad Pro would not have been able to get through. Maybe my M1 iPad Pro could have gotten two or three hours of battery life on that same usage. But if you go on a day like this one where we had six hours of screen on time with a little over 25% of my battery taken up, Again, you do the math on that one. Now, I don't think we would get 24 hours of battery life, but I do think that we can get easily 12 hours if all we were doing was watching Peacock videos or taking notes in the notes application. So again, depending on which applications you're using, the types of applications, if you're just surfing the web, watching YouTube, on Netflix, you will get that 12 hours of battery life. But if you're doing something a little bit more intensive, probably that five to seven hours of battery life is that sweet spot, but maybe even a little bit more depending on how new your iPad is. So leave some comments down below about your experience with battery life if you are using an iPadOS 18 device, and especially if you're using an older iPad to run iPadOS 18, very curious to know. But now let's get into the what's new. The first thing that I wanna bring up is inside the Books app. So again, I'm not somebody who visits the Books app too often, but we did get a new little continue section right here, and as well as a new visual when it comes to continuing any book that you're reading. So as you can see, Winnie the Pooh is right here. I tap on that. It brings me right where I was in the Winnie the Pooh book, and you do have a nice little visual kind of like app icon, for lack of a better term, inside the Books application for you to just jump right in when you are ready to go. So the next new piece is going to be the hidden folder. You may or may not be aware that the new feature that came with iOS as well as iPadOS 18 is the ability to hide application. So if you long press on here and then press require face ID and then hide and require face ID, it's gonna scan my face. You're gonna get a little prompt here. We're gonna hide the app and then WordPress is gonna disappear. Now that's not new, but what is new is how it looks like in the hidden folder. So before the hidden folder, it just had an eyeball with a little cross outside of it or inside of the actual eyeball to indicate that you couldn't see it. But now we have all these fake applications or at least these kind of app icon looking things. And no matter how many applications you have in here, it's gonna look exactly the same. And to access it, you just tap on there. It's gonna require face ID and then both the applications do show up. And then if I long press right here and then press don't require face ID, I can then take it out. So new feature with a new visual with beta four as well as public beta two. The next one is gonna be the stock application, which you can see right there. Now, at first glance, it doesn't look very different, but if you look at them side by side, the actual graph inside the application has shifted a little bit upwards. Again, nothing crazy when it comes to functionality, if at all, just something a little bit different. And the opacity has also changed in terms of the actual saturation of it. So something to consider. Another piece that's good to show off is if we go into the settings, you now have a section down here that's dedicated to iCloud. Now, previously, in most times when you wanna access iCloud, you'd have to click on your iCloud account right here and then go into the iCloud section here to go into this view. And you might have also noticed one more thing, which we're gonna to touch on in a second. But now, instead of going through that double function, you can just actually click on iCloud right here and it'll take you directly there. 
And if you might have noticed, if I get out of there and go back to iCloud, a little animation pops up. Now this little emblem was there previously, it was new to iPadOS 18, but that new animation is what's new in the beta 4 format where it kind of just props up and kind of goes into place. Also leave a comment down below what you guys think about this new iCloud layout. I actually love this because it gives you pretty much everything at a glance overall. 30,000 photos is absolutely insane. The next piece is gonna be mostly around control center. So I'm gonna long press here and show you guys exactly what I mean. Most of the time when it comes to these changes, it's gonna be mostly visual. Like for instance, in the clock section here, the alarm and the stopwatch are now visually a little bit different. Whereas before the alarm and the stopwatch were actually filled in with a grayscale color. Now they're transparent, so it's a little bit of a different look. And then to remind you that we are using a beta, if you scroll down here, you're gonna see a little bit of a bug down here, which shows off in the settings. This is not a real icon, it is Bluetooth power toggle. I've actually added it already once, but if I try to add it again, it's just gonna be a blank icon there that if you do tap on it, nothing's gonna happen. I thought maybe the Bluetooth toggle would turn off and on, but it is something that you're dealing with when it comes to dealing with a beta. There's some little things like that that maybe aren't detrimental, but are there for you to actually take into account. And then lastly, if you go down to the accessibility setting, especially to the motor accessibility, we get a new icon and a new feature to toggle, which is the eye tracking feature. I have a whole video talking about eye tracking and how it's still quite not there, but I'm sure it will be once the actual beta releases or the public version of this will release later in September. And the final piece is going to be in the customization. So if I press on edit and press on customize, Something that's, I guess, technically not new, but it's finally working is going to be this automatic section. So if you click on automatic, it's going to default to the system setting of dark mode versus light mode, where as you can see, I am in light mode right now and it changed all the icons to that light color. So now if I go here and toggle on dark mode, it'll change all those icons into dark mode as well. That actually was not happening in my beta three update as well as my public beta one update. So now it is going to kind of match that system setting if I turn it off. So now it is working as intended. I'm gonna go back to my dark mode because that's what I personally like. And then also you can actually go with dark icons and the lighter background versus before, if you were to click on the dark one, it would make you go to the dark background. So I'm gonna turn this on light to give you a little bit more of a pop in contrast with those dark colors. And then two final things to consider. These are actually not iPadOS specific, but the first one is gonna be with iOS 18. We got some new CarPlay enabled wallpapers. There's eight new ones that correspond with the new iOS 18 and iPadOS 18 look. And then also there is more RCS support. So more carriers are finally turning on RCS for their carrier options in order to be able to text Android phones and still have that kind of iMessage-like experience, which I love to see because I've actually been using it quite a decent amount communicating with others and people are wondering why it's working so well. So that's an awesome little kind of inclusion piece when it comes to RCS. I'm glad Apple is slowly opening this up and carriers are adopting it even before the actual public release to kind of test it out and get ready for it. But those are all the changes with iPadOS 18 and then some. Let's finish up this video, everybody. So that will just about do it for this video, everybody. As you saw, there weren't too many functional differences, if any. Apple kind of just added a little bit more of a visual difference of some applications, some icons, making it a little bit more pleasing, or maybe Apple's just playing with different ideas when it comes to what they want their final iteration of iPadOS 18 to be. Unfortunately, as you also saw, there's still no Apple intelligence features, no AI features. Apple did say that they are coming out with that during this beta program, so I don't think we're gonna have to wait for an 18.1 iteration later on down the line. I do think we will be getting it, at least to some extent, during this beta program prior to the September release. So let's see how Apple ends up releasing these moving forward. But that'll do it for this video, everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know that you made it to the end. And if you guys have installed iPadOS 18 on your iPad, let me know with a comment down below because Battery life for me has been very good overall. But again, I'm dealing with an M4 iPad Pro. Let me know if you've installed it on an older iPad to see exactly what your battery life is like or what your experience has been like overall. But that'll do it for me, everybody. If you wanna watch another video that's like this one, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video right here. And if not, I chose this video for you right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.